So I was out on this trail, and I would, I'm going to tell one more story. And we were just talking about photo albums, so to speak, of the things that God has and is doing in our lives. That uh, one way I've said it yesterday, he builds up the framework of faith. I think that's a good phrase. Builds up the framework of faith. It's the building of faith, the structure of faith that gets established in our life by each one of those uh, happenings, those occurrences in our life. And so now when I go down to that avenue of angels, it's like there's an expectation level. Don't know what it's going to be like. Don't know what the experience is going to be. But the expectation level is is there before you get there because of the uh, repetitious history of you met God there and there and there and there. And uh, back last fall, I had been gone for two or three weeks and one night after dark, I thought, I'm going to go back down, walk on the trail. I like walking there in the dark and it's kind of, it's just, you know, it's more cozy. Uh, you're more undistracted. And it was a silent night, meaning no breeze and it wasn't, you know, no activity, very silent night. As I walk past these trees, uh, there was a little shh in the top of the trees. Well, I thought of David when it says, And when you hear the sound of the rustling of the leaves in the top of the mulberry trees, okay, that would be your sign. Well, I immediately thought of that. And I stopped. And when I did, it went up another level, goes shh. Well, then... Oh, at that point, now I'm like, okay, I think this is holy ground. I think this is a moment. You know, <laughs> I'm thinking, uh, this is God just kind of, uh, I witnessed where you went. I witnessed the people you touched, and I was there in the meetings, and now you've come back to, in a sense, pay homage. You know, uh, just pour your heart back out in gratefulness. And, and when I did that, it went up the next level. Oh my gosh, I had goosebumps and I had tears. It was one of those holy moments. And so, uh, well, I guess I just kind of revisited that moment again while I was telling the story yesterday. <laughs> so on one end of this avenue of angels, I've got those rustling in the tops of the leaves I was telling you about just a few minutes ago. On the very other end, I was, I got to tell this story. We've, we've, you've heard it, I'm sorry, but it, I think it does well to remind ourselves of good stories and and uh, it was when I uh, met my joy angel and uh, anyway I was standing there just saying God I'm the happiest person in the world as I, I don't want for anything I'm not here in fact all day today I, I'd gone all the way through the trail and turned around was going to walk back again and all day that I, on that trail I just said Lord you're the best dad ever the most uh, most benevolent and I just like God my heart is satisfied I, I couldn't uh, help but think of the verse in Psalms it says my soul is like a young child at his mother's breast it's just fully and, con and completely content uh, that's one way that Psalms uh, uh, described it and I just oh Lord I'm just so contented and I said but Lord I I'm not saying you can't talk if you want to say something, you're sure welcome to. Well, anyway, I looked up to the, uh, I, I just stood there quiet, opened my eyes, and right there on a branch, oh, 20 feet from me, something like that, was this goldfinch. And this goldfinch was just singing his little heart out right there beside me. And I thought, Lord, now that's kind of in my face. That's, that's a little too close for being coincidental. And so I said, I wonder what goldfinches stand for. So I did a Google search. You know, that's what you do when you want to ask of God and see what God wants us. Anyway, what is the symbolism of a goldfinch? Among other things, it was a harbinger of joy or a bringer of joy. I said, Lord, do I have a joy angel? I don't know, Lord. That, that just might be, maybe not. But uh, so I just kind of tucked it away as a possibility. Within the next night or two, I had a dream. In this dream, I met this young lady and her friends. 
and we all flew together. There's more details in this, but I'm going to cut it short because we've told this story before. At the end of it, uh, she we exchanged something back and forth, a little kind of what I call a flying harness, whatever that is. I, I, the Lord will have to show us what that means later on. We never shared words. We never talked between us. But I knew in my knower when I woke up that her name was Simka. Simka. Never heard that name before in my life that I know of. So I thought, I wonder, okay, Simka, that's kind of unusual. I wonder what it means. So I went to Google. And what is Sim? S-I-M-K-A. In Russian, guess what it means? Joy. I thought, Russian, that's a little hard. I don't know if I could get anything from God if it's has if it comes from Russia, you know. It's like <laughs> okay, that was a little harsh, sorry. <laughs> but I knew that in Hebrew there is another phrase or another sound that sounds a little like a K. Simcha. And so that would be S I M C H A. And guess what? It is a name. And guess what? It means joy. And so that was uh, the introduction to one more of my angels. And that's on one very furthest end of my avenue of angels. On the very other end is this rustling in the tops of the trees. And then in between I have all these other little uh, fingerprints of God that it's like, oh, you walk by that tree, you walk by that opening, you look over and there's a sunset went through that opening at one morning and it's just anyway thank the lord for the album of uh, memory stones along the way